Hey, what's up guys? Misha from Periphery here. I'm over at Jackson right now to show you my new USA signature model. This is the Juggernaut HT6 and that is the HT7. Look at them, gorgeous. So the first thing you'll probably notice is this brand new neck. This is a cooked flame maple fretboard and a cooked hard rock quarter sawn maple neck. So that neck is actually the same material, it's just cooked. Cooking the neck removes all the moisture, it makes it more durable, uh, and it looks great. And actually, it just gives it this very smooth finish, which I love. Uh, and I, I just think it looks fantastic with the flame maple fretboard. So it does change the sort of look and the color palette of the guitar a bit, and, and that's why we've changed the colors as well. So I, I, I wanted this uh, satin Ferrari red, because I just love this color, it's very striking. Um, and definitely catches the eye, and it just matches beautifully with this this cooked wood look that we have here. But there's a lot about the original guitar that was just perfect, so we haven't changed absolutely everything. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, interestingly enough, on these uh, solid color models, we actually changed the pickups. I put a new signature pickup set out with Bare Knuckle. It's called the Ragnarok set, and uh, they're very aggressive. That was the main goal with this. Um, so we still have the cooked basswood body here, as we did before, but the pickups are now different. and. This is just such a spanky, in-your-face guitar. Uh, I, I really think these pickups suit this, this whole spec very, very well. The other thing that we did, which I think is kind of cool, is uh, these etched carbon fiber covers. Uh, I just think it makes it look so sleek, but they're kind of subtle, so from afar, it probably just look like black covers, and then on closer inspection, you see it's got that awesome texture. So I, I just, I was totally sold on that when I saw it. We still have the same hip shot bridge, hip shot locking tuners, Graftech nut, lumen lace side dots, Dunlop dual design, uh, strap locks here and here, uh, so, and, and of course the hip shot knobs, and this exact same switching system as before. So overall the guitar is not that different, we've just sort of upgraded it in places where I think we could make it better. So one of the things we didn't change is we still have the hardtail bridge on this. This is the hip shot bridge, the fixed bridge, which I absolutely love. It's, I've, at this point, I've had so many fixed bridges on the guitars. And ultimately, like I guess comfort plays a big part with it, but the sound is the most important thing. And I just think this is the most balanced sounding bridge. I never really realized how much of a difference it makes until I was like sort of swapping them out on the same guitar. Um, and you know, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm just not the biggest fan of floating bridges. Um, obviously they're a pain to work with, but they, they really change the sound of the guitar. And I've been able to try this out on these models, you know, sort of see the difference that it makes. So for the best sounding guitars, uh, I will always use uh, these kinds of bridges, especially when you pair it with a uh, graphite nut like the Graftech that we have here. So we also kept the Lumen Lace side dots. These glow in the dark. These are the best thing ever. Uh, if you've seen me talk about my guitars in the past, you probably know about these. These, these will glow in the dark in a, on a dark stage or whatever, right? And they will let you see where, where you're at, which I need a lot of the times because our light show is not always great for me. It's better for the people watching it. Uh, and there was a lot of times where I was messing up just because I couldn't see where I was. But the great thing is that these don't actually illuminate anything, so they won't light up your face like the LEDs would. There's no batteries or anything like that. So it's just a super convenient sort of secret way to be able to see where you are in the dark on the guitar. Uh, and it's one of those things that you don't, you're like, oh, whatever, uh, I don't care about it too much. And then when you get a guitar with it, you're like, every guitar I have has to have these. And that's pretty much where I'm at now. Like, every guitar I have has these. And as always, we've kept the carve the same. The carve is something that we actually spent a lot of time really nailing it, because I was very, very picky about it. So having this ultra-wide carve that we have here, your hand will never, ever get in the way of that, you know? Uh, and also the way it's sculpted here, I always like to call this the handshake heel, because it just like feels like it's shaking your hand when you're all the way up. So it's, it's a way to have the bolt-on guitar, which I just think sounds the best. I love bolt-on guitars, but you know, you still have the unimpeded upper fret access there. So it's kind of the best of both worlds for that scenario. So this color is satin Ferrari red, and that's something that I really wanted because the beautiful striking color. We also have 
uh, Satin Daphne Blue because I've been on this Strat kick lately and Daphne Blue is just the best color. And it looks so cool in satin, especially with this color palette that we've got going on. And then we've got something that's a bit more traditional with the satin silver, and that's got a little bit of a flake to it. So, you know, that'll look really cool on stage. So those colors are actually available on the seven string model as well. All five colors that we do are available on the six or the seven. Um, but this one is obviously the HT6. <laughs> All right, so this is the HT7 FM. The FM is for flame maple because now we're doing satin flame maple tops on these. And again, this is not exclusive to the seven string. You can get this on the six string models, but the differences will be the same across the two. The main difference between this, the six and the seven, apart from the seven string, of course, is the scale length. That's 25 and a half on the six. This is 26 and a half to accommodate that low string. I just think it's the perfect scale length for a seven string. Now, with the, the flame maple tops, you actually get a mahogany body now. It used to be alder, but when we were trying out mahogany, I just felt like it was making the guitar sound so rich. And it was also dif differentiating it a little bit from the, the solid colors. So there's now more of a difference in sound just off the body wood alone. But we also have the juggernaut pickups in this. So this has the same pickups as the last one. And again, I just felt like it really suited the rich sound of the mahogany. So these guitars actually do sound pretty different and I would see myself probably using one or the other for different songs or even different sections of a song when we're recording because one would be probably better suited uh, to the more aggressive sections and the other ones are more full, purry, richer sections, you know? So one easy way to differentiate these pickups is that we are doing these beautiful brushed nickel covers with the black hex screws on there. I just think it looks great. It matches the, the hardware and the frets, and it just fits the look of the guitar perfectly. So with the, the FM model, you get either this Laguna Burst or the Amber Tiger Eye, both on a gorgeous flame maple top with the taped off binding. Aside from that, it's functionally the same guitar, and what I've always loved is how consistent these models feel between the six and the seven. Seven string is truthfully a pretty different instrument, especially when it comes to the scale length and the extra string. It's, it can be very easy for these guitars to feel wildly different, but I do think that Jacks have done a fantastic job making these guitars feel like they're in that same world, that same realm. One other thing that we have not changed because this is the best thing ever on all guitars and should be on all guitars, and I'm starting with mine, trying to influence everybody else, is having the truss rod adjuster right there where you can adjust it so easily. No cover, nothing. You just give it a little twist when you need to adjust your neck. That is not something I have to do very often because of how stable these necks are, but sometimes when we're going to Australia, to Japan, and it's summer in one place and winter in the other, you just give it a little quarter turn and you're good to go. So that's something I hope to see on more and more guitars, just for my sake.